Hey guys, you know, I've promised to do this for so long and I've always put it off or have an excuse. And you know what? Today I said enough is enough. I am within, I'm doing this YouTube thing and I'm going to do my best to be consistent, um, to push out great content. And yeah, I hope you enjoy this journey with me as I also learn and unlearn and get better and all of that. So I'm very excited for this. I've been very keen to this for a long time. And yeah, finally getting started. Sorry, my lips are ashy. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. So basically what I did was I asked people to ask me things that they would like to know. And yeah, I have some interesting questions. So I think that's the best way to start off getting to know me, like some questions that you guys have wanted to know or been curious about. Um, okay, so a lot of the questions are around how I started, what got me into cooking. And this story, I don't know, I've shared it a lot before, but since it's a new channel and everything. So I started cooking in, I've always actually cooked, let me be honest, like I've been cooking since I was seven but my passion around food and making it my main focus came in 2015 um just after my grand passed um so my grand was just like an amazing well-rounded woman she was a uh, she was all for women's rights she used to be a home economics teacher she used to teach women how to use their hands to make money and use like like skill them basically so that they can like make income and just like be independent so she was like that type of queen she was wild tribal my grand had been according to my family had been to more than 70 countries and she was just one of those so when she would travel she would try new dishes and all of that and bring bring back those recipes and try them out with my family so i must be honest i've been eating good my whole life my mom was very extra even when i was growing up i ate real good <laughs> my lunch boxes were popping i used to have pizzas stuff with chicken and all these things like i used to have like really great lunch and also at home for dinner my mom was really creative and she went above and beyond to make good meals so when my grand passed in 2015 like i was in a weird place like i struggled to to to, to cope and one thing that brought us closer together and one thing we connected on was food so I started just cooking to make myself feel better like I started trying out dishes, googling dishes, youtubing dishes to try and just teach myself and it was a way to feel closer to her. I used to ask my, my mom or my aunt like what's the granny like cooking like what was the favorite and then I'll take that and then I'll go try out my own version and that's how I ended up just being in that space. It was a way of comforting me and it did. And now it moved to a, a place of it being becoming my career so after a year of doing that i decided to drop out of school and just focus on the food so yeah i hope that answers that question of how do i get started why i started how do i learn to cook so just to add on how i learned was teach i'm self-taught i've never gone to school for this or or anything like that so i ended up just starting youtube YouTube, Woolworths Taste Magazine, read blogs. So I wouldn't copy and paste the recipe. I would like read different recipes of the same thing. So if it's curry, I'll read different types of curry recipes, see how people are making it, see what variation people are making it in, and then make my own spin on it. And that's how I learned, I guess. If I was struggling with certain skills or learning certain things, I would uh, go on YouTube. YouTube is, is great for videos, so I used to just go on a video, see how Gordon Ramsay does it or other shifts, and yeah, that's how I practice. Okay. Yo. Okay. Well, someone, yo, this question is a bit late. <laughs> Let's just dive in. So, someone asked, do you actually pay for your whole life, or do your parents subsidize your living good, good? So, I pay for my whole life. Um, I haven't had any subsidy from my parents since I dropped out of school. Uh, when I was in school, they were paying for like obviously my school and my res. And then when I dropped out, I told them that I will cover myself. So sorry, I got interrupted by a delivery. But what I was saying is, 
Um, I told him I could cover myself because you can't just drop out from school and he still wants him to supply life. Doesn't make sense to me. So I made a deal with my mom that she'll pay half my rent for that first year that I'm out of school and I'll make sure I have the, the rest. And then, yeah, so I started doing campaigns and stuff and I always had rent set aside um, for where I'd be staying. And then, yeah, so that's how it happened. But I do cover my whole life. I'm a single woman, very independent. And I've always been independent growing up just, um, just by growing up in a single parent home, my mom was also was very busy. She traveled a lot, so I used to spend a lot of time at aftercare or friends' houses because she was traveling. So I've always just been independent. I've always just known how to make shit happen for myself, which I do. And yeah, I don't think I live an extra life. I just think I like nice things. So it seems like I live an extra life, but I, I save up for what I do, what, what the things that I want. I save up, or I make goals for it in your best but really it's not that hard like to live the life you want if you if you push at it like i hustle like i always say one thing i know how to do is make money and i'm in a space where let's say i'm not getting campaigns i can still do catering i can still cook for people in their homes and i'll still make money so i'm lucky to be in that space okay next question these questions uh were interesting actually um, if food wasn't your calling, what do you think you'd be doing? I'm uh, actually not sure yet. I'm not sure because one, I hate the 95 life. I've tried it once upon a time, and I hated it. Uh, and but when I grew up, the funny thing is, I wanted to be a doctor. I don't know what happened. Like life just went very far. I'm not sure what I'll do here. Eh? Um, maybe do like interior design. Uh, or an air hostess, that's what I could do. I would definitely be great for air hostess because I love to travel and I don't have tax. I think I'll meet the criteria <laughs> for like Emirates or whatever. So I think that's what I'll do. Okay, what's the next question? Please share some tips on moving out and budgeting for living on your own. No, guys, moving is expensive, okay? It is. It is a very expensive exercise and with, in terms of budgeting, I think when you move, you must just do things in bits. So in terms of actually moving, first month rent, deposit, and just be able to get to the essentials that you will need in your new space. So like for me, that would be like a fridge, um, a microwave, a bed, a couch. These other things come last. Like I, when I got to my first place, I the TV was last. I started with a couch. Um, I luckily came to, to a place that had all the appliances. Then I got a bed, and then and then I started adding on the extras that I like. I started adding on slowly but surely. So every month would be a new item. That's how I used to tell myself a new item per month. So next month is a TV. You set money aside or budget for a TV, um, and that's how I would do it. Then the next month, oh, I like this headboard. I want a headboard. Let's sit, let me see how much I need to budget for that. And that's how I do it. Tackle one thing at a time. Don't try to finish it once. Like, no, it's not a real thing. Furnish in bits and pieces with things that you need and then start adding your wants as you go. I think that's the best I can advise. Um, what else? What has been your biggest insecurity and how did you or are you dealing with it? Yo, guys, I'm highly insecure. Like, <sighs> It's, it's so frustrating because it's 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 been from a lot of things things like from childhood where you deal with abandonment and not having the greatest relationship with your dad and then it it it, it grows from that it grows like it gets into now your relationships with people like your like with with, with men like sometimes the how do I, I don't know how to explain this but like for example my first boyfriend was really the greatest like he. He didn't give me much to feel secure about because he would always be cheating, always be doing the most. Then he has Leander like pr processing all of that, and like now you wonder like what's wrong with me, and then this this just adds on. Then my next relationship was the same. Muntu that is cheating or looking for things outside the relationship. Now you question yourself again, and yeah. So I've always been insecure, always wondering if I'm enough, always. 
overcompensating, always pulling away. If I feel like I'm about to get hurt, I'm, I'm, I'm a super complicated person because I have all these insecurities. So it's something I've been working on. So I'm really on a self-love journey. I have to understand a lot of things are not about me and I need to not take what people say and just like internalize it. I internalize a lot and that has been my biggest fault. So I do a lot of meditation, listen to podcasts, um, just telling myself like, just talk to yourself, give yourself love, you are everything. So I'm one of those people like, sometimes like, like no matter, yeah, you're the girl. Oh, I'm I have to remind myself because like, many times I don't feel like that. Sometimes I feel like, oh, or I'm just I'm not nice or this is not it's a lot like it's a very hard journey and I'm still on it I'm probably at the beginning stages because I had to unlearn man like I experienced like a relationship with a good person who made me feel good all the time and then I'd find myself like trying to question like no man there has to be something or whatever and then that's when I told myself so like never you have to you, you can't experience this love and still doubt yourself and yeah so i've been on that journey let us see let us see let us see yo hey intense guys let us see let us see okay this yo this question Okay, someone asked how old I am. I am 26. I'm born 4 May 1994. Freedom baby. Okay, I was I was holding on because there's this other question that took me aback. Anyway, someone asked um Oh gosh, here's a question. Like I had it like right here and now it's gone. Or well, maybe I deleted it something. Oh, someone asked, have you ever been bi curious? Would you date a girl? So, I don't think I could date a girl, but girls can do the thing. Like, girls <laughs> get our bodies just as much as we get their bodies. So, I don't know if I could actually be in a relationship because I actually do still I have I have a toxic relationship with men and I still want them and I want to be with them and I pitch up forever with them but at the same time also girls are attractive as well sometimes you look at a girl like mm, okay so I don't know I think this is I can't say for sure that I won't well but I've kissed a girl I've been touched by a girl and there was there was nothing wrong with it so who knows what could happen <laughs> ah, okay let's see i don't know how many questions i'm supposed to answer but like i will let me keep the first video short and i hope it's it is enough for people um what what have you enjoyed most about being able to provide enough for others for me the happiness and satisfaction that people get from eating my food just just exactly the cherry on top for me like that's all i need in this life if you are happy about what i've done and what i've cooked then i'm happy and yeah so i don't know i don't know if there's any more questions than that i think that's about it people not a lot of people ask i think also because you know i've been promising to do this for so long like for so damn long that now that it's, I asked the game, people probably like, oh, hello. She's probably not going to. She's probably not going to do it. She's going to ask us these things. Then we write these things. And then, so, let me, I, I totally get why. Um, but I saw. Sorry, if you guys are waiting. I wish I had like a beer. No. I wish I had a beer, but I can't drink. I can't drink. So let me tell you what I did. I went to Dr. Nani today to do what is it? Laser lipo cavitation because of my stubborn love handles. So I had my first session today. So I'm a bit of ah, tender and you're not allowed to drink because why? The sugar and the beverages make fat. And what are we trying to do? Burn fat. So what? I can't drink. Okay. 
So now, another question. Okay, these are two other questions. Someone asked, does it affect you anyhow when people assume that you're rude or not, not a nice person? Definitely affects me. Like, I am not, I think I'm very nice. I just think on a platform like Twitter, which I've only been on, either you know me on Twitter or you know me on Instagram, whichever, but it, it has limited human interaction like youtube does so if someone doesn't know you your tone can be misread your your energy can be misread very easily i think i have a, a very intense energy i'm very hard so sometimes my hardness doesn't is is, is comes off as rudeness or well, not nice but it's just generally how i am i'm very like strong i don't know how to describe it so everything i say and do is expressive it's hard it's intense and sometimes people can misinterpret that and you know the reason actually one of the reasons why i'm doing the youtube site is so people actually know me like people must know that i'm just gender i'm chill and relaxed i like to bang i like to go off just like you and there's nothing about me um but hopefully with time people can see that hey okay we can't get it she i get her I thought, I thought this was the job. And then, so someone asked, how hard was it hard making cooking with Linda brand, and how do you go about securing your future mm, hard It's definitely hard building a brand. I've been doing this for five years, and it's 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 not a joke. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of passion. So whenever you try to build your brand, you have to do it for the right reasons because there's going to be days when they're seriously tough and you're just like, okay, no one is getting into my, in my content, no one likes my food, no one likes my post. And if you are doing it for the right reason, it actually doesn't matter. Those days, will be, you'll be able to get past those days because you know what, you are doing it for you, you are doing it for yourself. So you'll always get up and cook, you'll always get up and create content, you'll take breaks, come back and still do it because this is the only thing you see us all doing so it is it is hard so how did i build my following i don't i, I wish i had like a, a clear answer but one thing i know i do is i advertise my brand all the time if anyone has got it yet you will know about cooking with Leander. and that's what a lot of people don't realize you have to market yourself you have to be your own marketing team you must push it down people's throats i'm cooking with Leander. oh check out my page oh do this or oh, tag celebrities tag brands that you want to work with like be elaborate people must know about you they're not going to know about you if you post and you just chilling and you say you have to be elaborate you know coca-cola doesn't stop advertising pepsi still advertises and they don't need to advertise they can still sell a drink without any adverts because that's how everyone knows their brand but they still advertise that shows you that you never stop advertising or pushing yourself and it's been a five-year journey i don't start off with hundred thousand followers that happened only this year i started off at zero like everyone and it's gradually grown over the years and with my content and the way even my content has transitioned like it's gotten better over the years so with improvements um pushing great work and just pushing yourself i think that's how i've managed to grow my brand and then and okay which country that you have traveled to had the best cuisine and which one had the worst you guys you know if i don't know if i don't get track the best cuisine like when i go to london i'm in heaven why simply because there's so many cultures there's so many different people so you'll go to the indian restaurant and you will get good indian food you'll go to um go to a jamaican oh damn it's slapped it's slapped um but i also like food in italy is just that after a few days though the the bloating is very intense because it's a lot of carbs it's like risotto it's pasta it's pizza it's a lot it's overwhelming absolutely delicious because they like fresh ingredients like tomatoes fresh herbs um fresh seafood like i went to a market in Italy and it was like where all of the restaurants get their seafood and i was like shook because some of the fish was actually moving it was that fresh and so that's what i really love about their cooking philosophy it's like fresh 
beautiful flavorful ingredients so i love that about italy i want to say i hated it but i struggled with thai food i think in general i just struggled with asian food so in thailand uh, i probably ate like maybe two days normal normal traditional thai food and then after that um, i stopped but it's not it's not because it's awful anything it's because i find the flavors overwhelming and i'm very i like simple food so it's overwhelming the lemongrasses, the gingers, the garlic, the chilies, the curry paste is a lot for a, like someone like me who just likes simple food. So after doing two years, the food was just way too rich for me and I just I started ordering like takeout or eating like normal Western food like pizzas and all of that. But I wouldn't say it's the worst food. The, the food is absolutely beautiful, but for me it was overwhelming. Okay. Okay. And I think I think that would answer best. And yeah, I hope that answered somewhat about me. Um, of course, if down the line of this journey we get another kid to name me, or we have more questions that we can um, ask me, I'll definitely um, say and share them. But for now, I think I'm done, and I really hope that you enjoyed this and I hope you got a, a great glimpse into me and I hope you stay in this journey with me because I'm also learning and I'm excited to share a different side of me so yeah make sure oh I've been waiting to say this make sure you subscribe and comment <laughs> okay bye guys <laughs>